Hello YouTubers, welcome to Pagan Perspective on your Friday. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and I hope that you ate so much that you now hate yourself. Moving on, roll the intro. This week we are talking about divinity in terms of gods or goddesses, names, images that we work with of the god and goddess. And the two that I work with, as some of you may know, um, are Nynx, the Greek goddess of the night, like nighttime, you know, when the sun goes down, and Eros, which is the Greek goddess, goddess, I mean, he may be a goddess sometimes, he's just the, the diva, but no. <laughs> uh, the Greek god of love, Eros. He's more popularly known for his Roman counterpart, Cupid. Um, as many of you know, Romans and Greeks, uh, I believe it was the Romans that took the Greeks. I don't know if it was the Greeks that took the Romans, I don't know. I always get those confused. Anyway, one of them borrowed shit, so, um, anywho, um, you might know him as Cupid. Now, there's several different legends about the origins of these two beings, um, Nynx and Eros, and it's it's like that with a lot of Greek mythology that you find. And I think it's because it's all meant to be symbolic, it's not meant to be taken literally. Just like I um, kind of personally believe that that's how the image of the god and goddess are, just in general, but, um, it's a whole nother story. Anywho, um, Eros and Nynx, in one legend that I really like, um, because they are both together in this legend, Eros is the son of Nynx. Now, he's more popularly known as the son of Aphrodite, or Venus in the Roman tradition. But, I really like this legend, because it's very deep. <laughs> um, Nynx lives in the underworld, I think, from the legends that I've gathered, um, with, you know, all the other dark and gloomy, misunderstood beings. <laughs> and in the underworld, in this pit of despair, depression, death, and ends, love was born out of a giant golden egg laid by our mother, Nynx. And from this giant golden egg that Nynx laid in the underworld, Eros burst from it, and love was born into the universe. Now, another legend that I really love about Eros, specifically, is that he was the first god ever, except for Chaos. Chaos was the blackness, the emptiness, the vast formless shape that the universe was born from. Chaos would almost be, I guess, what would be considered before the Big Bang, I guess? I don't know. But, um, there was one legend that Eros was the oldest god next to Chaos. And the reason for this legend was that the gods and goddesses needed love to create the world, otherwise they wouldn't have cared at all. They wouldn't have had any inspiration to create it, they wouldn't have had any inspiration to um, be in it. There wouldn't be any inspiration for life, there wouldn't be any inspiration for anything, because this legend suggested that the whole world operates on love. And from love, the universe was born. And that's what I really like the legend of Eros. Now there's another one that said he was born from Aphrodite, as many of you know. And that one I don't like as much, just because it's kind of expected and it's not... It's, to me it wasn't really terribly deep, like it wasn't symbolic or profound in any way, really. And um, Aphrodite and Eros don't seem to get along too well anyway. <laughs> so, anyway, um, the one with him and Aphrodite, though, however, is the legend that the 
story of him and Psyche, which is Greek for the soul. And um, and this that's the legend that this one takes place in, is whenever he's the child of Aphrodite. In this legend, he falls in love with Psyche, which is, again, Greek for the soul. And so love falls in love with the soul. And I thought that was really deep and awesome and symbolic. And if you have never read the legend of Eros and Psyche, I'm not going to talk about it because it would be like a 30 minute video. It's so, so, so long. But it is well worth it. And it is a wonderful story. And reading it, it's really not that long. But I mean, if I were to talk about it, you would, I would be talking for some, way, some time. <laughs> but um, it's a great, great story. I love the story of Eros and Psyche. And um, back to Nynx now. Um, some more legends that I've heard of her. I've not really heard a ton of legends on her, and I've not found a lot of about her, really. Um, so if anybody has something that is a lot of information about Nynx, feel free to share it with me, because chances are I've seen it, but, I mean, chances are I might not have as well, so who knows. But, um, anywho, Nynx is feared among the gods and goddesses because she has given birth to so many gods and goddesses through many different legends, meaning that she controls a lot of life in the eyes of several of the gods and goddesses. And um, Zeus is terrified of her, although I've not really necessarily found out why apart from the fact that she has given birth to many gods and goddesses that could fuck him up. <laughs> And, um, Nynx, again, is the goddess of the night. And I guess now I'll speak about my experience with both Nynx and Eros, starting with Nynx first. My experience with Nynx, and I was actually speaking um, to someone about this the other day, um, I kind of view darkness and night as lovers, in a sense but not necessarily the same thing. Night, which is what I worship and work with, because I worship with Nynx, the goddess of the night, and, um, I think I'm actually saying her name wrong this whole video. It's either Nyx, which I think is the right one actually, or Nynx, but I'm just gonna say Nynx, just since I've been saying it. Anyway, um, it doesn't really matter if you pronounce them wrong, I mean, it does, it does, but what's mostly important, I think, is the image. Um, anyway, my experience with her is that she's not necessarily darkness completely, she's more, I don't even know how to explain it, it's so strange, and some of you who have had experiences with her might understand what I'm speaking of, but... She helps me accept things that I wouldn't normally accept. I would cry about and want to change and desire to alter this or get that or achieve this. But she just kind of helps me accept things as they are and not stress out about it as much. And um, it's I kind of feel like night is almost the peaceful quietness of darkness. And darkness can have depression, sadness, suicidal thoughts, and it could go on and on, you know. But And then evil and blah, blah, blah. But um, I feel like night is almost skimming on the surface of that. And sometimes I do venture down into the darkness of life and stuff. But I, I mostly stay in that night section, I guess, if this makes sense. And um, my experience with Eros is really strange. Um, I didn't even mention Anthros, which is, um, in some legends, his split personality, and in other legends, his um, twin brother. And in the legends that it's his split personality, Eros has two types of arrows. He has one made of lead and owl feathers, which are meant to inspire indifference and a numb emotion. And he has one that is made of gold and dove feathers, which are the arrows of love, which inspire love. And 
Anthros is the one who uses the owl one um, to basically Anthros really despises whenever people um, put down love in a very harsh manner like if you went up to somebody and professed your love to them and they're like ew get away from me you ugly cow or whatever Anthros would be fucking pissed and he would hunt them down <laughs> and he would use his arrows of indifference to make them feel what you felt is basically the idea behind this and um yeah <laughs> that's kind of what my experiences with him are not that I've had people experience me indifferent although I've had we all have we experience both sides of love but um anyway what I mean by that is I, I have seen both his positive and his dark side whenever he speaks to me and he can teach through very destructive manners. Love is a force that grabs you by the fucking nads and does not let you go. It is a very powerful force and it can teach you so 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 much but he does not promise that it is going to be painless because it is probably one of the most painful ways to learn about life but it is also one of the most rewarding and in my opinion and it's just wonderful and I've loved my experience with him even though it has been crazy and hectic and barbaric almost and scary terrifying really but he's wonderful he I'm so glad that he is my god <laughs> and I love working with him and he doesn't necessarily help me um, in the same way that Nynx does instead he helps me with compassion and kindness and also to love myself and to love others of course but to also love myself and that's something that he has helped me with a lot and that's my experience with Nynx and Eros and just a last note I guess the last thing I can think about um, I'm probably going to have a few of you ask this because I'm sure some of you have read the House of Night series and in the House of Night series it is basically a school of vampires <laughs> who practice Wiccan rituals, actually, and they worship Nynx as the goddess of all vampires. And, first off, I want to clarify, Nynx is not the goddess of all vampires. I have not found any legend that says such things like that. That is purely fiction. Although I love that series. That is purely fiction, of course. And I didn't even know that this series existed whenever I worshipped Nynx, and even after I discovered that I was a vampire, I still didn't know that the House of Night series existed, until um, one of my friends was like, Cole, you're, you're a vampire, right? And I was like, yeah, and they're like, and you worship Nynx? Is that who you said? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh my god, you should read this book, it's called The House of Night, and I was like, Psh, whatever, and but then I read it, and it's actually a pretty good series. But anyway, I just wanted to clarify, no, <laughs> I do not worship her the way that that series intends. And I also didn't even know about it until much, much later from worshipping her, like, that I began to worship her. Actually, the way that I got both of my god and goddess names <clears throat> was almost pure coincidence. I got the name Eros in my head. I was meditating, and I was just meditating, and then just one day that I was meditating, I heard Eros, 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 over and over in my head, and I was like, what is this? I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? I don't know what that arrows, like, like shooting arrows? What are you talking about? I don't, what? <laughs> and then it was spelling out E-R-O-S, E-R-O-S, and I was, I was like, I still don't know what that is, because I had never even heard that word. And so I googled it, and I found out that it was a real thing, and it was Cupid. And I was like, oh my god, I've always loved Cupid. And yeah, that's how that happened. And I found Nynx's name um, from researching Eros. And I found that one legend that I told you of him being birthed from 
the golden egg in the underworld. And then I found her name, and it was like something clicked inside my head, and it was like I was drawn to both of them completely. And I really wanted to work with them, and I did, and I am, and it's wonderful. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching me rant about a bunch of crazy stuff, and I love you. See ya.